Hi, I'm Aziz from Ozen Engineering. In this video, I will demonstrate designing a bandpass filter using scene matrix HFSS integrated workflow. An integrated scene matrix HFSS workflow consists of three steps. In the first step, starting from filter specification, one create a filter design using powerful scene matrix synthesis tools and built-in algorithms. The next step is to build a fully parameterized 3D model of the filter in HFSS using scene matrix automated layout tools. Finally, the simulated result in HFSS can be imported back into same matrix and a CAD tuning and optimization process is started. For this demonstration, we're going to use scene matrix desktop version, which is needed to link to HFSS for full 3D simulation. We're going to consider the, for this demonstration the case of a bandpass filter with the following specs. We get a start frequency of 3.55 GHz, a stop frequency of 3.7 GHz, a return loss of 20 dB. We're going to consider the lossless case with unload the Q of infinity. And we're going to select a filter order of 7. And we're going to calculate the filter performance from 3.2 to 4 gigahertz. Let's add a couple of transmission zeros, one at 3.5 and the other one at 3.75 gigahertz. Uh, we can define a physical topology by edit topology button here. And there are a couple of ways. One is a user defined topology. And the other one is to select a topology from the existing library, which, is, which are shown here. For this demonstration, we guess just gonna use the default, the scene matrix default, which is a Chibishev type topology with a folded canonical matrix. Now that we have entered all the filter specs, we can hit the calculate all to update the filter, uh, calculate filter performance. As we can see here, the ideal filter performance exhibit a couple of transmissions zero, 3.5 at 3.75 gigahertz, a return loss of 20 dB over the, the bandwidth here from 3.5 to 3.75 gigahertz. Scene matrix also calculated the group delay as well as the power analysis here. And shown here is the maximum uh, power handling at the, the corresponding frequency, which happened to be at resonator number four, and also display the air breakdown voltage. In this section here, we can see uh, the coupling matrix displayed for the, uh, for the select filter. And we can have a couple of format. One is the, called the bandwidth format and the other one is normalized format. The next step in the design is basically to save the file. Let's make sure we save the file specification and to do a 3D modeling using HFSS. The next step in the integrated scene matrix HFSS workflow is to build a fully parameterized 3D model of the filter in HFSS using scene matrix automated layout tools. We're going to select a coaxial cavity for the current design. And for the cavity tuning mechanism, we have three options. One is flat on top, the other one is ball on top, and the next one is disc on top. We're gonna to be selecting the ball on top option here. And resonator type, we can either have a square or a round. And the cavity shape, we can also have different shapes here. Let's select a, a square resonator shape. And we're going to use uh, a round, or let's say select a square for the cavity shape. The cavity dimension, as well as the tuning screw dimension, is basically calculated by same matrix based on the center frequency of the filter. For example, we can change the tuning screw radius by using different screws. Uh, sizes like, for example, an M5. So let's apply the selection we have just made and go to the next step, which is the single cavity design. 
again displayed here at the calculated value by scene matrix, which we can just modify here by entering different values. We can define here a draft angle for the housing, which is really in, uh, needed during manufacturing. And also we can do the same thing for the resonator. We can also do a rounding for the housing and a rounding for the resonator. I choose these values here, just an example. For the cavity material, I'm using a, a silver. And let's apply and move to next step. The next step is to define the tuning scheme. And again, we can have either a no partial or partial filling. And for temperature compensation, we only apply to partial structure, for which here there are three sections here where, which can define different material. For example, the top partial, the bottom partial, and also for the tuning screw. And the default values or the calculated value from scene matrix are shown here, which can be modified at this stage and, and modified. But let's use the default values and we can apply and go to the next step. Here we set up HFSS to do an EGIN mode analysis. We have minimum frequency of 2.9, a maximum of, uh, frequency of seven and we have like five modes for the cavity. Uh, we can set the meshing uh, in this section here. And for this purpose, we're gonna do an auto meshing. And we can also select if we wanna do a curvilinear meshing for curved surfaces. Also, we can do a peak power analysis here by setting the, uh, the design here. And also we can do a terminal shift. So we're just gonna use the default here and we're going to construct the model and launch HFSS. Shown here is a HFSS Egan mode simulation for the single cavity, which is, as we can see here, fully parameterized. And one at this stage can analyze the cavity for resonance as well as for power handling and losses. A parametric study can be done also at this stage to see the effect of the tuning screw on the frequency as well as the unload of the keel. The next step, which is step number three, is to define the coupling scheme. We check you and see here, there are four options, the top window, the true window, the loop, and the probe. And at this stage, we're gonna select so the first one, which is the top window. We can apply this and move to the next step, which is defining the Egan mode analysis again for the coupling scheme. This stage here, we're gonna construct the model and send the simulation to be carried out. Shown here is the HFS simulation of the coupled cavities. The next step is uh, to define the input and output coupling to the cavities. And as we can see here, there are five choices we can use. And uh, uh, there is a top version, a disk version, a loop option, and top true option, and a waveguide interface. For this design, we're going to use the top version. And the, the definition of the coupling is given here, which is pre calculated by scene matrix. The connector type is a SMA connector, and we'll be selecting this uh, configuration, both the input and output. And we're gonna apply and go to the next step. Here, we're gonna construct the model and launch HFSS to simulate the input and output uh, cavity. And again, we can modify the meshing, as well as we can modify any of these parameters here. So let's construct the model. And launch it. Here, an HFSS model for the cavity. As we can see here, we're going to do a full HFSS model analysis on the cavity to find the reflection coefficient as well as the group delay. And again, the input and output cavities are fully parameterized. The next step is to choose full 3D modeling to do a full 3D filter layout 
uh, design. The filter here, as we select in the beginning, the rain line, but this can be changed. The topology can be arbitrarily changed by clicking any of the resonator and rotating that or and changing their orientation. Also, the input and output can be changed by rotating the probe around the resonator. The next step is to define the cross coupled structure. And there are five cross coupled structures for the which can be used for different cross coupling application. And for this purpose, we can just use the default. The last step is to do the modeling, where we're going to do a model construction and we define the simulation parameter which need to be passed to HFSS. So let's click on the model to construct the model. Once the construction of the model is complete, we're gonna run the simulation by invoking HFSS. This shows the HFSS simulation of the complete filter. We're going to look at the rectangular plot of scattering parameters 1, 1, and S2, 1. As we can see here, the S1, 1, S2, 1 are not meeting the specs. And the next step is to do a computer added tuning in scene metric. 